Hi, Nadav. How's it going? It's going well. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you liking your time in East India? It's been amazing. Uh, you guys have really, really picked a great crop of hackers to come out here. Yeah, that's exciting to hear. Uh, what do you think about the venue? Uh, it's good. It's really good. Um, I'd say like everything has been really well organized. Um, you know, like hackathons are kind of generally totally crazy, um, but it's felt like everything has run pretty smoothly. Tell me about your first experience with Ethereum. Yeah, so I, um, in like 2015, I took a class at Stanford called Bitcoin and Cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. um, and it was taught by Dan Bonet and Joe Bonneau um, and some other folks, and they were very progressive, I'd say, in that like they had an entire section dedicated to Ethereum, um, which was in, at the time like you know very much like I think it was it had just launched on mainnet. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was the first time that I had interacted with Ethereum and like written a contract. Um, and you know, back then it was like a total mess to work with. Um, still is a total mess to work with, but <laughs> a little bit less of a total mess. Um, and I, I think that like what I really loved about it is that whereas Bitcoin was like interesting on an ideological level, um, Ethereum really captured my imagination uh, in terms of like the sorts of things that you can build with blockchain technology and those being readily available um, to like normal web developers. Mm. So what is your project and how did it get started? So we're working on Dharma protocol. Dharma is a, uh, a protocol for borrowing and lending tokens. Uh, essentially uh, our core thesis is that um, there are a lot of really interesting use cases for cryptocurrencies that involve building financial services that are globally accessible right out of the box. Um, and uh, all of those kind of lie downstream of having a robust decentralized credit market. Um, and so essentially we're trying to build the infrastructure today that powers financial services that will be globally accessible tomorrow. Um, so the way that it got started um, was I was working as an engineer at Coinbase um, and uh, this was around like 2016 or so. Um, and the this is like around the time when uh, a lot of projects in the Ethereum space were just starting to do like their like ICOs and token sales. Um, most notably like Augur and like Digix DAO and there was all these like really exciting. Uh, it, it was really exciting because like people were actually like trying to like build businesses on top of this like project. Um, and everybody in the community was kind of thinking like, oh, like we could build um, prediction markets, but decentralized, or we could build um, like, uh, you know, marketplaces, but decentralized, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, uh, I thought that it would be really interesting to build a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform that was decentralized. So like, you know, lending club without lending club in the middle. Um, and so I kind of started hacking around with that and like, you know, building like little proofs of concept. Um, and that idea kind of evolved and got iterated on over time and kind of metamorphosized into what it is today, uh, which is kind of this generic protocol that other people can use to build their own applications. So what do you think is the most exciting project in this space that's not yours? Um, that's a good question. I am, uh, so just Ethereum specific? Yeah. Okay. I'd have to say I'm really excited about, I, st I still think Augur is like the most exciting mm. project in, in the space. I really do. I think Augur is like, it's been like, it's been around for a while now and so people kind of forget like the core value prop of it, but I, I really think having like a global, like super liquid prediction market, like for everything is like such a like radical proposition that has so many interesting use cases like just to like be able to one day like be like hey Siri like what is like you know the odds that it's gonna rain tomorrow like what are the odds that like Barcelona is gonna get like beaten in the finals or something like that and, like like all of these things are just like like having a kind of like a quantified pulse on like the wisdom of the crowd globally is just such a powerful concept and it's a really interesting primitive that you can use to build like things like insurance and things like uh, like uh, like Futarchy and all these crazy wild sci-fi concepts. And so I, I really do think that Augur 
though it's been around for a while now and like um, has been in development for a long time, I do think it is probably like the most exciting project in the space. What is the best thing that hasn't been built yet? Um, really good wallets. I think like really good wallets that have great UX um, in the space. Like whether that's like uh, like some sort of like uh, whether it takes the form of like a Chrome extension or like an app on your phone. Like we really still haven't like cracked like good UX that is super accessible to like average people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that happens at the wallet level. Like that's like the biggest like that's the biggest low hanging fruit that needs to be fixed right now um, to make D apps like actually usable by normal people who aren't technical. What are some of your experiences with the hackers so far? Yeah, it's been it's been amazing because like in, I think in Silicon Valley we like don't necessarily um, interact with like the Indian crypto scene as much, um, and I think that's partially because um, the government here has kind of clamped down on a lot of the trading, and so it it doesn't seem to have had the same sort of development of a kind of core crypto scene um, as a lot of other hotspots. Um, but I think the my what is really surprised me coming here is just like the like raw knowledge of like like not just ethereum but other blockchain projects that's on the ground here despite the fact that people haven't necessarily been able to like trade in like a robust way um like it really like watching the talks on friday and seeing the sorts of questions that people ask they're really deep questions that like indicate a strong understanding of not only like you know blockchain tech in the abstract but like really like the nitty-gritty of like what you know new consensus algos are looking like or what sort of trade-offs exist with them well i named my company dharma and so you can probably like guess that i'm a really big fan of india in general <laughs> I've, I've spent a lot of time here in the past um and i just generally love indian culture um so to answer your second question first um i'd say that my favorite part of being in india is probably the food because i just love indian food so damn much and you just can't get this good of Indian food back in the States. Um, <laughs> um, but my favorite part of Eat India particularly, um, it's honestly just been seeing how enthusiastic people have been about building stuff on top of Dharma. Like, we're really excited about that. That's, that, that, that has been, like, a really huge validator for our team to see that, like, developers, especially in a country that, in our opinion, is, like, so well poised to benefit from what we're building, like seeing how excited people are about building applications is is like it you know it means the world to us. So it's mm-hmm. awesome. So how do we keep that momentum going post East India? Hmm. You mean particularly on the ground here? Yeah. I think I think there need to be regular meetups are like like there's it seems like such a like simple thing like oh like you know just post like a thing like every two weeks or something and get the whole community together and get them in a room and get them to like watch a speaker or something like that or like do a workshop like little simple things like that like just do wonders for building a community Mm -hmm. and for like maintaining kind of a momentum of people who are excited and following what's going on and who are like working on perhaps building their own things um and i think that like in a sense like india is actually like the indian eth community is actually advantaged in so far as like like when you host like meetups in China or in Hong Kong or something, like you really need to filter out a lot of people who are very much just interested in Ethereum uh, from a speculative standpoint. Um, and because you can't, because it's so much harder to speculate on it, like on the ground here, I think it's actually kind of nice because if you host meetups and people attend them, it's likely because they're interested in the technology. Um, and so I think that. Um, just maintaining like a regular cadence of meetups and in-person events where people can hang out with each other and learn about exciting stuff that's happening in Ethereum um, could go a long way for this community. For sure, for sure. It seems like blockchain people are quirky. What's your quirk? What's my quirk? Um, hmm. I used to be in a hardcore heavy metal band um, that was very serious. Uh, like we had, we have like an album out that was like on iTunes and things like that, and like we toured around a bunch. Um, um, I'm not gonna say the name of it because 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 you can just Google that yourself if you're interested. Um, but I'd probably say that you know there's there might be a, a few videos of me on the internet like head banging like crazy on on stage. So 
Cool. Brings a new perspective to the space. It brings a new perspective, indeed. Yeah. So uh, the final question is, uh, what's your favorite emoji? My favorite emoji. I'm gonna try to make the face of it because I like can't really describe like describe it. Like or... describe it. It's like the like like the one that like uh, it's like oh, <laughs> like it like kind of looks like it's like in pain, but it's also like a like like potentially like an ecstasy too. It's it's kind of a funny one. I find it to be right. a very versatile emoji. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you so much for your time, Nadal. Of course. <laughs>